We're thrilled to have you here with us today. We're going to speak on the real sh about society. Listen, we're diving into a topic that sparks a lot of debate, a topic that has been the center of countless discussions and arguments. It's a topic that tends to get people as fired up as Guy Fieri at a chilly cook-off, and it's one that affects us all in one way or another. Why do some people view corporations as evil, as detrimental to society, as essentially the Lex Luthor to our collective Superman? What drives this perception? Now, before you start drafting your strongly worded letter about how not all corporations are bad, hold your horses. We understand that there are good corporations out there. We're not here to engage in a black and white debate. This isn't about painting all corporations with the same brush. Instead, we're going to unpack the reasons, the very valid reasons, why some people see corporations as the bad guys. The puppet masters, pulling the strings from their ivory towers, built on a foundation of questionable business practices. It's a complex issue with many layers. Over the next few minutes, we'll explore 12 specific areas where corporations, let's just say, haven't exactly covered themselves in glory. From corporate greed to environmental damage, to worker exploitation and more, these are issues that have real-world consequences. We're shining a light on the dark underbelly of the corporate world, the stuff they don't want you to see. It's time to pull back the curtain and reveal the truth. Buckle up, it's going to be a bumpy ride. Stay with us as we navigate through this intricate and often controversial landscape. First up, let's talk about corporate greed, shall we? It's a topic that never seems to go out of style. Because when we're talking about corporations behaving badly, this is often public enemy number one. The headlines are filled with stories of corporate scandals and unethical practices. It's the image of executives lighting cigars with $100 bills, hoarding profits while their employees are struggling to make ends meet. The disparity between the boardroom and the factory floor is staggering. It's the relentless pursuit of profit at the expense of, well, pretty much everything else. Workers, consumers, the environment, you name it. This single-minded focus on the bottom line often leads to devastating consequences. And the frustrating part is, it often feels like this pursuit of profit knows no bounds. The lengths to which some companies will go to increase their earnings can be shocking. It's like trying to reason with a horde of hungry zombies, except instead of brains, they crave bigger bonuses and more favorable stock options. Their insatiable hunger for wealth seems never-ending. And unfortunately, in a system that often prioritizes shareholder value above all else, this insatiable appetite for profit can have some pretty nasty consequences. From environmental degradation to social inequality, the impact is far-reaching and often irreversible. Speaking of nasty consequences, let's talk about the insidious ways corporations can influence politics. Because here's the thing. Corporations are not just economic entities, they're powerful political players too, and they know how to throw their weight around. Lobbying politicians, bankrolling campaigns, and generally making sure the rules of the game are rigged in their favor. It's like a rigged game of Monopoly, where one player has bought up all the properties and gets to write the rules. And who ends up losing out in this rigged game? That's right. The rest of us, the average citizens, the small businesses, the environment, we're all just pawns in their high-stakes game of political chess. And while we're on the topic of rigged games, let's talk about taxes, shall we? It's a subject that affects us all, yet often feels like a game only a few know how to play. Because while the rest of us are dutifully paying our taxes, Many corporations are using every trick in the book to avoid paying their fair share. They hire teams of accountants and lawyers to find ways to minimize their tax bills. They're stashing profits in offshore accounts, exploiting loopholes, and setting up complex structures to hide their earnings, and generally playing a game of hide-and-seek with the taxman. It's a sophisticated operation designed to keep their money out of the public coffers. It's like a group of friends splitting a pizza, 
but one friend somehow manages to eat most of the pizza while claiming they only ate one slice. It's unfair and frustrating. That friend takes advantage of the situation, leaving the rest to cover the cost. And guess who gets stuck with the bill? That's right, the rest of us. We end up paying more because someone else isn't paying their share. That's right, the rest of us. We bear the burden of their tax avoidance. Because when corporations don't pay their fair share in taxes, it's the public services we all rely on that suffer, education, healthcare, and infrastructure. It's the public services we all rely on that suffer, education, healthcare, and infrastructure. These essential services are underfunded and struggle to meet the needs of the community. Infrastructure, they all take a hit. Our roads, bridges, and parks deteriorate, affecting our quality of life. Chapter 4 The Earth Cries, Foul Corporations and Environmental Damage And speaking of things that are taking a hit, let's not forget about the environment. Because when it comes to environmental damage, some corporations have a lot to answer for. From polluting our air and water, to deforestation, to contributing to climate change, they've treated the planet like an all-you-can trash buffet. It's the classic tragedy of the commons, where short-term profits are prioritized over the long-term health of the planet, and the consequences are becoming increasingly dire. Extreme weather events, rising sea levels, mass extinctions, it's a bleak picture, folks. But the environmental damage is just one piece of the puzzle. Because behind those cheap products we all love, there's often a hidden human cost. The exploitation of workers in low-wage countries. We're talking about sweatshops with abysmal working conditions, poverty wages, and a lack of basic labor rights. It's easy to turn a blind eye to these injustices when they're happening halfway across the world but we can't ignore the human cost of our insatiable appetite for cheap goods. Those sneakers you're wearing, that smartphone in your pocket, they might be a bargain for you, but for the people who made them, they represent a system that's rigged against them. Chapter 6. Stifling the Little Guy Monopolistic Practices and speaking of systems that are rigged, let's talk about monopolies. Because when corporations get too big, too powerful, they can start to stifle competition, crush smaller businesses, and ultimately leave consumers with fewer choices and higher prices. It's the classic David and Goliath story, but in this version, Goliath usually wins. And when Goliath wins, we all lose. And while we're on the topic of losing, Let's talk about income inequality, because there's no denying that the gap between the haves and the have-nots is widening, and corporations are playing a starring role in this economic drama. From CEO pay that's spiraling out of control, while worker wages stagnate to automation, that's displacing workers faster than they can be retrained, the system seems to be designed to benefit those at the very top. It's like a game of musical chairs where the music stops, and suddenly there are only a few chairs left. And guess who gets to sit down? That's right, the CEOs and shareholders, while the rest of us are left scrambling for a place to stand. And what happens when corporations misbehave? Well, that's where things get even more frustrating. Because all too often, it seems like corporations are able to operate with a level of impunity that would make even the most seasoned criminal mastermind blush. When they pollute, when they exploit workers, when they engage in financial wrongdoing, the consequences are often minimal. A slap on the wrist, a fine that's a drop in the bucket compared to their profits. It's like getting caught speeding and getting a warning because you drive a really expensive car. It's no wonder that so many people feel like corporations are above the law. And how do they manage to get away with it? Well. That brings us back to lobbying, doesn't it? Because corporations understand that the best way to avoid accountability is to write the rules themselves. They spend billions of dollars every year lobbying politicians, influencing legislation, and generally making sure that the laws are written in their favor. 
It's like a baker lobbying the government to make it mandatory for everyone to eat cake for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. It might be great for the baker's bottom line, but it's not exactly in the best interest of public health, is it? Chapter 10. Buy, buy, buy. The manipulation of consumers. But it's not just politicians that corporations are trying to influence. It's all of us. Through sophisticated advertising campaigns, they're constantly bombarding us with messages designed to make us feel inadequate, insecure, and ultimately, like we need to buy their products to be happy. It's like they're whispering in our ears, telling us that we need that new car, that fancy phone, that designer handbag to be complete. And the scary part is it often works. It often... Chapter 11 Out with the local, in with the mega. The erosion of local businesses. And as we're busy consuming, we often fail to notice the toll it's taking on our communities. Because as big corporations move in, they often push out smaller locally owned businesses, creating a homogenized landscape where every town seems to have the same chain stores and restaurants. It's like traveling the world and realizing that every place you visit has the same McDonald's and Starbucks. Sure, it's familiar, it's convenient, but it lacks the character, the soul, the uniqueness that comes from supporting local businesses. Chapter 12. The bottom line. Profit over people. And ultimately, that's what it all comes down to, isn't it? The bottom line. Because in the eyes of many, corporations have become synonymous with putting profit above all else. Above people above the planet, above everything. It's a bleak picture, but it's important to remember that it's not a foregone conclusion. We have the power to demand better from the corporations that wield so much influence in our lives. We can vote with our wallets, support businesses that align with our values, and hold corporations accountable for their actions. Outro. What do you think? So, there you have it. 12 Reasons Why People See Corporations as Evil Of course, this is just a starting point, and there's much more to be said on this complex issue. Thanks for watching. If you found this video insightful, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more content like this. Let us know in the comments what you think about the role of corporations in society. Are they a force for good or evil, or somewhere in between? <laughs>